Now that we have our first Razor pages for create, read, update, and delete for the student entity, what we're going to do now, or entity set, what we're going to do now is go ahead and make some changes to those <clears throat> Razor pages. Also, I want to talk about the asynchronous code that exists. Asynchronous code by default exists in ASP.NET Entity Framework. What it means is that when a call is made to the database, or any time a call is made to the database within our uh, .NET Core Entity Framework, it actually sends that request asynchronously, which means a request is sent, and then a callback when the request has been completed exists so that we can go ahead and move on to the next task and we're not overloading the server waiting for one item after another which would be considered a synchronous call. Uh, the benefit is it, it is a small hit on the front end but on the back end uh, we can have a much more scalable system. It can accept many more requests uh, not necessarily simultaneously but uh, at the same time we can go ahead and uh, support a larger number of asynchronous users uh, of our system by providing asynchronous database requests. Now, the first thing I want to do is change the default behavior of those asynchronous requests. The default setting is single or default async, and what that means is it has to go out uh, for each query and pull all the data for a relative uh, filter. And if there's more than one record that's returned, for example, one single student is returned, then we're okay. But if two students are found that match that filter, we'll get an error. It's a little bit of overhead as well. So what we want to do is change that to first or default async. What that means is it only accepts the first record that's found. So if there's a duplicate or two records in the system, it doesn't give us an error. It just returns the first one, and then we move on. There's an option. Uh, an additional option to use find async and find async actually has a small performance advantage as well because if you do a search or filter based on the primary key it will actually look at the uh, um, local entity as opposed to actually going into the database and making a call to the database providing again a slight uh, improvement in performance but again I, I don't want to use that right the second because it limits me to just the primary key uh, filters so let's go ahead and change through a global find replace. Oops, hang on. The single or default async is what we want to find. That's actually in the wrong place. Let's put that there. And then let's change this to first or default async, look in the entire solution and just replace all, select yes. And in my case, three instances were replaced. I can go ahead and close my find replace. And now let's make some changes to our uh, razor pages that were created earlier. Let's go over here to our solution explorer. Oops, let me uh, close that. And in the solution explorer, go ahead and open up our pages open up students and go to our details page. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and go to the index page. And in the index page, we can actually see that we have, if we scroll down, we'll actually see that for the details page, when someone clicks on details for a specific student entity, we actually send a request to the detail page with the current student ID. Okay, so now that we have uh, the idea that we're going to send the index, or excuse me, the student ID to our pages, let's go ahead and go to our uh, other pages, such as edit, and change our page directive to accept the ID. Again, put a uh, question mark here at the end. It basically means that it can be null, much like our C-sharp code and other languages that define null for our primitive data types. I'm going to do the same thing for details, delete, and create. Actually, you know what? Create, we don't want to use because create is going to create a brand new record. Go ahead and run your command or uh, run your project. Let 
And let's go ahead and go to students and view the details of a record. Up here on the very top, we want to see that it shows one, which is the ID for that particular student. And that's a, a method that we just created. Okay, currently, our students do not have an enrollments property, so stop your project from running and go ahead and go into your students details page. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, add the enrollments. Go ahead and open our details.html.cs page. We're going to add some code to include our enrollments when the student context is called. So just go ahead and pause here and type out that code. And you can see that I'm going to go ahead and call in my enroll enrollments for my student, as well as the course details for each of those enrollments. The as no tracking provides a slight performance improvement if the entities are returned, but yet not updated in the current context. Don't worry about that for right now. Just again, just know that it's a slight performance improvement in some circumstances. Let's go ahead and put the data inside of our display for details. This data would include all the enrollments and courses. So right here at the end of our display of the student data, go ahead and type the following HTML code, which will then also pull in our, through an iteration, all of our enrollments. And then for each enrollment, it will pull in details for the course and grade given for that course. Go ahead and run the app. Go ahead and go to students, go into details, and you can see the enrollments, courses taken, and the grade provided. Go ahead and close it. Stop the application. In the next lesson, we'll actually be updating the create page.